said earlier that we shouldn't give too much respect to books, but yet you seem to give a lot of respect to books and emphasize I have love for them. the importance of scripture. Yes, yes. Well, I have love for them. I sleep with them. I literally sleep with them. People talk of respect towards the scriptures and they say, you know, keep the scriptures in a proper place in the temple. I sit on the commode and read the Gita. And that's, yeah, that's the way I express my love. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that too, but I looked at it in the mantra sense, like the, previously it would be mantra to reach a state, and now it's mantra out of love, or reading out of love, not to... And why do you want yeah. to put the Bible on a pedestal out yeah. there, up there, somewhere? Yeah. Bring it close it's to your heart. Strange, isn't it? Huh? Bring it close to your heart, keep it here. Yeah. Here. Uh, but yes, I yes, that's totally. I I agree totally. But I think there there is a place for this because many people cannot bring it close to themselves un until it it has some outer meaning, you know, in this play of forms and rituals. And we are not all the same. Yes, so. you what you're saying sounds intuitive and tempting to accept, but uh, it is not actually the way things work. If you are giving value to something because it is promising you a special experience, if it is coming to you from past, from authority, from church, from commands of teachers and parents, then it can never be something of your own. It will never become something of your own. You need to have a very private love affair with God. Very, very private. In fact, the role of the teacher is to bring you to God's bedroom and then excuse himself from there. Now you are there and God is there and the Guru's job is done. Enjoy, the two of you. <laughs> so the so the problem with this let's say conventional approach to spirituality would be that it's too much importance put on the on the let's say ritual on the, the on method. this official on the way, middleman but but less but too too little on the understanding on the yes, understanding. yes yes it's like an indian arranged marriage have you ever seen or read of it so there is the bride there is the groom and then there are some 40 trillion more people were also very important and often the bride and the groom don't even get to see each other properly because there are so many others in between <laughs> and these so many others they are all there for a reason somebody has to partake in some ritual somebody is supposed to bring one particular gift that sanctifies the wedding somebody is a priest somebody is the priest's uncle so everybody is there for a reason, but all together they make such a uh, vicious crowd that there is no love between the two real ones. So it's the middle one, it's the Guru that is responsible for so much of deprivation.
तो गुरु मस्ट मेक हिमसेल्फ अननेसेसरी ही मस्ट बिकम रिडेंडेंट and what does it mean that the guru becomes redundant it means that the guru now becomes a lover the guru is gone the satsang is over can we play now let's have a little fun the guru is gone dead now we are friends so guru must pass away very soon because the guru is no fun at all too serious too too aloof but most of us are so fatherless that instead of lovers we are looking for fathers so the guru would come dressed as a father have you not seen how the various gurus present themselves hmm like santa claus like god the father hmm overgrown over bloated teddy bears <laughs> can you make love with them seriously <laughs> you remember what half is said yesterday that the guru is not a guru if you can't kiss him he must prove that he is real by giving you a mark on the rump who is happy ah we met him yesterday but you were there were you not no yeah. हाँ हाँ अच्छा हुफिस इन दैट सेंस वेट पर्शियन सेम क्लास एज रूमी बट अल लेस नोन हर्ड वंस वॉट इज लाइक डिवोशन बाकी वेन यू आर इन लव इन द ऑल एग्जिस्टेंस नो नॉट रियली बिकॉज यू कैन नेवर लव ऑल एग्जिस्टेंस all this thing about unconditional love and loving everything as long as you are loving everything remember you are still in the game of duality and your love will be accompanied by hate the hate may remain hidden the love may appear prominent but you would still be hating secretly whenever you are talking the language of things there would always be like and dislike it is impossible to like without disliking that is non duality that is to understand the rules of duality you can have nothing called unconditional love towards everything in the world everything is balanced out by its opposite you cannot have white without black you cannot have like without dislike bhakti means to love only the one only the one and nothing else bhakti does not mean that you have to be in love with diverse things bhakti means to love only the one and when you are in loving relationship with the one then there is a special quality in your relationship with the world but the relationship with the world is secondary the central thing in bhakti is your relationship with the truth that is bhakti this is a kind of withdrawing from the world no it's not about a withdrawal from the world i mean in one sense like not exactly. in the sense of giving primary importance yes it is a withdrawal but only in the sense of giving primary importance which then enables you to sort of be in the world yes so you are in the world you are operating in the world but your primary concern is not really material why is it not material because you cannot hold joy in your hands whatever is of primary importance is something that can never be touched felt smelt thought of can you keep love in your pocket so your primary emphasis has to be on something that is not material and that is bhakti that i am sipping the tea but more important than tea to me is the peace 
as long as the sipping does nothing to cross the piece i would continue to sit but if there comes a point when the world starts meddling with my peace then to hoots to the void if i can sit with you and relax and be in joy then it's wonderful to sit with you but if sitting with you starts causing ripples in my sky in my ocean then i must immediately know that it's not that hmm? one becomes a hypocrite trying to love everything now you are full of disgust <coughs> and yet you are pretending as if you are loving it hmm? like most people who keep smiling ah how wonderful and within you are saying how soon <laughs> will you relieve the world from your presence why don't you die just now so what should we do with our likes and dislikes let them be the body must dislike high temperatures there is nothing criminal about disliking i must dislike it when my sessions are disturbed by a dog or a monkey you are not obliged to go and hug everything why act stupid like that and just for discussion in the gita the sabars it says that the yogi is economous in the face of heat and cold how do we but, reconcile but heat and, yes heat and cold are there does it say that the yogi allows himself to be burned down to have equanimity means to remain poised but heat is there and the body does not like it you move away or you quench the fire equanimity does not mean that your behavior must remain the same it is a very subtle thing equanimity is something very subtle equanimity means whether you like it or whether you dislike it you are still poised you are still present you are still surrendered some yogis intentionally subject themselves to extremes of heat for example perhaps to strengthen their capacity of equanimity they expose themselves to extremes of heat but that is anyway happening in life but they do it intentionally it's not needed because it is anyway happening life is anyway offering you extremes of experiences life is so full there is nobody whose range of experiences is wider than somebody else's range even if you lock yourself up in a room yet you would have tremendous experiences but i i had the experience myself of uh there was a sauna and uh, cold water and i was alternating and it made the sauna very hot back and forth back and forth and after that experience my tolerance of uh, the normal heat in life was much better that may happen i do not deny that that may happen but how many times and in how many ways will you conduct experiences experiments like these once in a while but you see how many pairs of dualities exist heat and cold dry and wet day and night bright and dark there are an infinite numbers of pairs of dualities with how many of these pairs are you going to conduct such experiments not one with a few with a few the thing is that life is anyway offering a lot of them to you so instead of conducting special experiments and i i'm not saying there is something wrong with special experiments but they are not needed because life is anyway offering so many pairs of these extremes to us who has not seen death in his intimate circle anybody who has not seen death anybody who's 
friends have never died whose relations have never died we have seen that right anybody who has not seen birth the extremes of experiences and this is the most extreme experience you can have the experience of birth and death they are always happening who has not seen hope and despair who has not seen anger and attachment and when life is anyway throwing these at us we better catch them it's like having your refrigerator loaded with food stuff and still going to a special supermarket to buy something exotic now there is no harm in buying something exotic but it's just needless in the sense that your fridge is your cupboard is already always so full and uh, just also not to think uh, when you put yourself into extreme conditions by your own will then it's an experiment but when it happens without your will then it's, it's torturing then it's karma why don't we look at everything like as an experiment See, so i'm glad he he brought this up i'm glad he brought this up the very fact that the consciousness knows that it is an experiment alters the experiment when life brings it to you it is not an experiment when you are doing it consciously deliberately then the very fact of the happening has somehow been distorted because you know that it is deliberate so these kind of experiments will help may help in fact whether you are building a physique trying to keep yourself fit or whether you are deciding when or not to eat it pays to test the system a little but that's of secondary importance you'll find it amusing how so much of the domain of spirituality is just to escape the self you don't want to look at what is already happening in your life so you go for exotic experiences you have a wife at home do you know what it means to have a wife at home do you really know the whole universe of experiences that this person opens up for you now why do you need another experience she is in herself an entire galaxy ha huh? from shooting stars to black holes you find everything there <laughs> now why do you need to go to the alps to seek exotic experiences just forget her birthday you'll have something very exotic <laughs>